Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a very special edition of House and Home On Demand. For those of you I haven't had an opportunity to meet yet, my name is Scott Fusell. I'm the Director of Education for CSL Management. I'm also a Beta Theta Pi from Middle Tennessee State, where I had an absolutely life-changing fraternity experience. We are so grateful that you decided to spend some time with us today. Uh, if this year has uh, dictated that you put some of those major projects on hold, man, you're totally in the right spot because we've got a couple really extraordinary guests with us who just happen to be uh, also two of my favorite people on the planet. So uh, thrilled to have Liz Toombs with us today. She is the owner of PDR Interiors. She is also an AGD from University of Kentucky. She's also, little known fact, massive fan of 90s and 2000s pop music. Also with us today is Erica Ross. She's also a UK grad and she happens to be a potato connoisseur. So we have a really interesting panel with incredibly diverse interest and they also just happen to be extraordinary at their jobs. So Erica and Liz, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We are so grat so, so grateful that you are that you're here with us and that you're going to be spending or sharing some ideas on how we can spruce up our chapter houses on a on a limited budget. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. So I uh, always love getting to work with you guys and always love hearing what your your ideas are, especially this year. We've had it's really stretched us what we have to do financially and creatively. So eager to hear your ideas today. And with that said, I'll stop talking at this point and turn it over to you guys. Uh, please share away. And uh, if I have a question or two, I might jump in. But uh, for the most part, I'll keep it, keep my comments to a minimum. And so people can hear from you. And uh, just so grateful that you're sharing with our crew today. So take it away. All right. Yeah. Feel free to jump in at any time. Um, wow. This is something we could talk about all day long. So in a perfect world, everybody has a robust budget for these summer projects for summer 2021. If that's your current situation, that's wonderful and everybody's budgets are going to be a little bit different. No one's ever gonna have the same budget or the same priorities to do within their spaces. Um, so our advice, we always advise our clients to focus on updating a space comprehensively. So if you have a good budget, don't piecemeal it, go ahead and jump in and floor to ceiling update that space. So paint, update your flooring, put in new furniture, artwork, window coverings, whatever it is that's applicable to the room that you are considering, go ahead and do it all. You are going to see the biggest impact if you go ahead and do it that way instead of just doing small pieces. Um, here on this next slide, you'll see an example of a space that we did um, this last summer. So you can see the, the left and the um, top so picture. Sorry are the before photos uh, and then the bottom is the after photo so we went through um, and changed everything in there so it got a complete refresh it feels refreshed it feels new it feels brighter cleaner um, a little bit more airy not so dark so that when the chapter came in they really saw that complete overhaul and felt like they had a brand new space because they did that's um, you can see that by keeping no pieces from the previous space that nothing looks tired because that's sometimes what you're going to run into is if you keep a sofa because it's in okay shape but you change out that chair and side table near it then when you put the new pieces in then that old stuff is going to start to look a little bit tired so anyway that's usually why we say go ahead and replace everything but depending on the effect that COVID-19 may have had on membership and chapter finances, we are not stupid. We recognize that it just may not be feasible to completely overhaul your facility. Awesome. So as Liz was saying, we always recommend doing a space top to bottom, all one room if you can. Now, if that's not the case and you've got a tight budget this year, we actually recommend the opposite and you want to do small things in each common space if you can. So I know that kind of we're giving you two different things here, but that's the best way to go about it when you are trying to stretch your dollar. Um, so what you really want to do is to trick the eye into having as big of an impact as you can in a room. Some of these um, things we're going to talk about here actually cost no money at all. Um, so you just a lot of it is a little bit more time consuming. So you want to take your time and really look at what you can do with what you have. 
So this next slide here shows um, one of our biggest recommendations that we can ever um, suggest, which is swapping out your throw pillows. These, this is a super economical option um, because you can go to places like our personal favorite, Home Goods, uh, TJ Maxx, Wayfair, Parable, Etsy, those types of places, and you can find very affordable throw pillows. And this, what it does is kind of takes your eye away from whatever you're trying to camouflage here. So if it's a sofa that's 15 years old and it's still serving its purpose, but it just doesn't look, you know, looks a little tired and you can't quite afford to invest in a brand new one, updating those throw pillows is going to do wonders for your space. Um, so when it comes to the pillows themselves, we always recommend doing different colors, patterns, and textures. So in other words, you don't want to have all solid pillows or you don't want to have all the same color um, because that's just kind of boring for the eye. So this kind of creates a lot of visual interest for you and again, draws your eye away from that piece that you're just not super excited about anymore. Next up is uh, changing up your accessories. And one thing I think is important to note about all of these ideas that we're sharing is they can be executed by anyone within the organization. So a house director could be the champion of this kind of project. People on the house core board, alumni, anyone can get involved and do this um, if you don't have a budget to bring in a professional. So don't be scared. Uh, we're making sure that we're giving you really good actionable items here that anybody can do. So as I said, accessories is another thing that you can focus on. Um, it's an economical way to change things out, but give the space a sense of refresh again. Um, so you can add new ones. Again, all those places that Erica mentioned as far as retailers and online sites are great sources if you need to purchase items, but also don't be afraid just to rework what you already have. One of our favorite tricks and it takes a minute, is to go around the house, gather up all the accessories that are there. So anything on tabletops, mantles, bookcases, everywhere. Get all that stuff together in one place and then start to put it back. But don't put it back exactly where it was before. Start to play around with your placement and reimagine where things go. You have no idea what you have until you start pulling it out and then putting it in a new place. And then when you walk in a room, you'll think, I didn't even know that was there. You know, I haven't seen that in the house in three years. Who knew that, that it looked so good? So you can completely revamp and that costs you zero dollars. It just takes a little bit of time. When you go and you put things back or you add things in new, don't be afraid to stack them on top of each other or to group them together. It's really boring just to line them up in a line on a shelf or a tabletop, and it really makes it look cluttered. So when you start to stack or group things together, um, you get a lot more visual interest, and it makes you look like a pro. Man, love that. <laughs> you gonna do that to your own house, Scott? <laughs> yeah, you know it's funny. Like we we just have uh, kind of our COVID project was uh, to kind of refresh one of our rooms, and it's just amazing how moving things around uh as you mentioned that totally changes your 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 mind's eye and your physical eye right it just changes your perspective on everything and you can do, like we had spaces where we just repurposed items and it looks like a completely new space with things that we already had in our home so um you know and they, those are some bigger items so I, I love the idea of having you know some of these smaller pieces these accessories that you're talking about repurposing them and just put them in a different spot and how that just changes everything. So, uh, you know, for people like me who are, have no interior design expertise whatsoever, uh, you're giving me really easily accessible, achievable uh, goals and tools right here. So I'm loving that. So I'm sorry to interrupt, but I'm, just, I'm geeking out on what you're sharing right now. So love it. You're so fine. super helpful. Super helpful. Oh, you're good. And I failed to mention that on our Instagram account, on the IGTV tab, we have a full tutorial of how to update a bookcase. So we show you a bad looking one and then walk you right through how to get to a good one. So definitely take advantage of that free resource if you're on Instagram. That's awesome. Uh, tell everybody what the handle is, Liz. PDR Interiors. There you go. Great. Thank you. Everybody check that out. It's amazing. All right, so next up, we wanna start talking about your dining furniture. Um, so we all know how, so it's actually back on that other slide, we got a little ahead of ourselves, but what we did here was, um, we've got two different options for you. So one on the left, we've got the chair cover option, and then over on the right, we've shown 
uh, reupholstering just the dining seat itself. Um, so we all know kind of how expensive dining furniture can get. It is a huge investment. So when you know they've got this this piece that you can see this Chippendale chair. This uh, specific example actually was a recent chapter. They purchased the house from an organization that was already there and they bought that furniture from them. So they actually it came with the house because it was still in such great shape. The only downside was those seats had just shown that wear and tear over the years and there was just no fixing the seat itself other than reupholstering. So what this group actually opted to do was reupholster them themselves. So we supplied the fabric for them and told them exactly how much they would need. And they volunteered to just take a weekend and reupholster each one of those, I wanna say 40 dining chairs. Um, and so just imagine what that saved on that labor overall. Um, so that is a huge, you know, if you've got the manpower to do things like that, absolutely use it when you can. Um, so then on the other side, we've got a chair cover. So this would be if the seat itself is getting a little bit banged up and isn't as in such good condition as the other, um, but it's still serving its purpose. Again, it, it's doing what you need. Um, but this is actually an example where you can bring in some branding. So this is actually a washable chair cover where you can personalize it, different colors, your organization's letters. Um, the possibilities are endless. We are actually dying to use one of these ourselves. We haven't used them yet, um, but we're itching to, for the chance to do so. Um, and then again, we actually will have an IGTV on how to reupholster the dining seats um, here soon. So check back for that as well. That's awesome. I'm eager to see that tutorial. and I. I think I was scared to try that uh, until my sister-in-law, when we were kind of working on the same project, she's like, oh my gosh, I can teach you how to do this in 10 minutes. And so hard. instead of going and buying all new dining room furniture, my wife and I are just, we got the fabric, learned how to do it ourselves, and it was super easy. So it's uh, yeah. it's that's the thing, especially for us guys who just feel like we don't, this is not in our wheelhouse, it's pretty easy to do. And, and the gain yeah, is, is. is significant. So exactly. love those ideas. You ready for the next one? Yes. So then next up, we are talking about um, tablecloths and placemats. So if the issue here is actually the table itself, you know, the top can get really banged up and scratched. But if you don't have it in the budget right now to actually replace the table, going in with a tablecloth or placemat can be super helpful for you. Um, we've actually heard about some food service companies that are supplying personalized placemats. So we thought that was really cool. Um, if you wanna reach out to whoever your food service provider is and see if they happen to be one that is offering that. Um, honestly, anything in this just COVID world right now that is removable and cleanable is just of the best importance. So just, you know, doing that and keeping it at the front of your mind at all times is, is awesome love that so you're not only redecorating the space but you're also making it healthier and safer too we're trying love it <laughs> all right so moving on let's talk about um incorporating your chapter branding so the first way that you could do this would be to um incorporate it within your artwork so think seals crests general symbols um, you can frame it, you can have them done like we did this wooden cutout. There are a lot of opportunities to incorporate your branding in that way. Um, and then they don't have to break the bank either. It could just be some very intentional areas that you choose to incorporate that, like in the living room, the foyer, some of the main common spaces. And it goes a long way to elevate the look of your chapter house and brand it at the same time. Um, and it's just better than picking up a random piece of artwork that maybe doesn't doesn't mean anything. So if you're just feeling like your artwork is tired, consider doing something like this. We've also um, done a couple chapter houses where we've incorporated photographs of the founders. Um, so if there's paintings or portraits of the founders, um, that's something else that you can do as well. It's just up to you as far as what you want the aesthetic to be in the space. And I love that Hello. idea. Can I interrupt you really quickly, Liz? Uh, yeah. two, two quick thoughts. First off, uh, for those of you at home who are watching this on demand, I'm in, in charge of advancing or uh, the slides. And so it's not Liz, it's me. I'm getting a little trigger happy and struggling a little bit. So if you see some bounce back, that's totally on me. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, to say really quickly is I love this idea of incorporating uh, insignia and the, the crest, the coat of arms or letters, anything that ties back to 
the organization, the values of the organization. You know, we're trying to promote a values-based experience here, and having those subtle reminders throughout the house of what we, who we are, and what we stand for, uh, I think can only uh, be a positive thing in terms of being uh, constantly reminding people of how we should be living and leading. And uh, I just love those suggestions uh, for for multiple reasons, uh, not just the aesthetic piece, but uh, just what. Um, the, the constant reminders that they also provide. So, man, I love those ideas. You ready for the next slide, Liz? I'm ready. All right. All right, so we're big on throw pillows around here. We don't make any, any bones about it. We've talked about it already once, and then here we are again. But throw pillows are another great way to incorporate chapter branding. We do it all the time, um, mostly in the, in the women's facilities. But anything from chapter, the, we've got the Greek letters, you could do the crest like we're showing here, um, the scripted um, uh, name, kind of spelled out, sorry, I'm struggling to think of that. So like a Delta Gamma scrolled out on the pillow, that script letter, lettering is really popular right now. Um, and they're just, they're a great way, again, just to update that and personalize it. Um, it's funny, we one time had considered putting the Greek letters, one letter on each pillow and then putting the trio side by side. And it was um, a great idea until we started thinking about it a little bit more. And you don't want to do that. You want to keep all your letters on one pillow because otherwise they can start to get a little jumbled up um, and then no longer represent the actual organization that you want it to represent. So there's a little random pro tip for you if you're thinking on, um, on doing some pillows there. Love that. So we'll keep going and we'll talk about um, entry mats. These have grown in popularity so much in the last couple of years. We have done these at almost every project that we have worked on. So sometimes they're put outside the door, um, sometimes they're inside a door, um, but they're commercial mats that can be hosed off, they can be cleaned, but we personalize them in different ways. So um, a lot of organizations are going through rebrands right now, and so we've seen a big surge in them wanting to get that new brand on the mat. So it could be letters, crests, whatever the branding is. Um, and it's a really great way. So as soon as somebody walks in that front door or up to that front door of the chapter house, they know exactly where they are. Um, and then it also has a very functional purpose as well. And it lasts a long time. So this isn't just some cheap little two by three mat that's gonna get destroyed the first time it snows outside. Um, it's really gonna be durable for you and last a long time. So next up, we want to talk about one of our favorite topics, clutter. Um, so just because you have, you know, a lot of little things, that doesn't mean they all need to be on your shelves, your built-ins, things like that. The more does not equal more in this case. We want to have very specific items that we want to showcase. Um, one example of what can kind of stack up over time are the trophies and awards, whether they be certificates or, you know, full large trophies or plaques, things like that. These are all amazing things that you want to be able to show off. Um, but we always recommend going through every couple of years and pulling out any that are definitely older than 10 years old, unless they are a major national award that you want to show off for the rest of time that's wonderful um, but just kind of cleaning it up and we've actually heard about um, some chapters having success in selling some trophies to alumni so if it was their chapter oh, that won man, that trophy, that's a great idea yes and so it gets rid of them out of the house and also is a fundraiser so that's a, a really smart idea that we've heard recently um but yeah so trophies things like that and as well as you know honestly just junk piles when things pile up it is you know just the worst and so a lot of times like in this example we will come in and just rework an entire shelf as you can see here you know we still want it to be when you walk in you say, wow, this chapter has won a lot of trophies. We're not trying to take that away, but there's kind of a fine line between, wow, they've won a lot of trophies and this is just a mess and way too cluttered. Um, so we feel like we really accomplished that here and um, just kind of cleaned it up. And again, you can just, you don't want it to become um, overwhelming. So that's kind of our, our best advice there. Man, I love that idea of selling trophies to alumni because I'm thinking, Man, if I wanted to live, relive my glory days, to have that trophy from that intramural championship back in the mid 90s would just be awesome. And it would mean nothing to anybody but me, but it would be exactly. something awesome to have in my man cave or something, right? And uh, yes. so, man, what a great idea. 
What a great yep. idea. Yeah, it keeps it out of the landfill and it is, it's just a fun memory to have for, you know, for you and your friends. Oh yeah, and you, you know, think about the stories that you get to embellish when your friends say, okay, what's this up with this old store, this old trophy here? So uh, mm -hmm. man, it becomes a fishtail uh, opportunity too. I love that, all right. <laughs> So just in conclusion, we know that none of these are earth shattering ideas. They are very simple, simple and actionable items. And that is that's on purpose. We wanted to give you something that you could sit down. And if you're looking around the house and just trying to think, what can we do for chapter members so that when they come back in the fall, that we're boosting morale, we're making them excited to be here. We're making things look good for recruitment. Um, so, you know, just always keeping those things in mind. Um, and again, these are very budget friendly, whatever your budget may be. Um, and some of them don't, don't take any budget at all. Maybe it's just scheduling a work day for a group of, of alums um, and house core board members to come and, and work on the house and work on this together. This stuff is a lot more fun when you do it in pairs or in teams than just tackling it by yourself. So, um, you know, I just think giving the students a refreshed house when they come back in the fall will do so much good for them. And then in turn, just trickle all through the chapter and just all the things that are going on next semester uh, when they come back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we know we've been talking at you for a very long time. You don't have the opportunity to talk back to us given that this is on demand. Um, but if you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Here is all of our contact information. You can get on our website, email or call us directly. We're on all of these social media platforms. And we also put out a lot of tips um, and just share ideas on our social media a lot. So I would encourage you to follow us just to see if there's anything else that we may be able to help you with. Um, and then coming in March, we are putting out um, a really exciting resource that we would love to share with you. So be sure to, to keep uh, an eye out for that. Awesome. Guys, I can't thank you enough uh, for being here today. This has just been extraordinary. I, I love these are all very accessible tools that you're equipping us with that can make a mountain of a difference within our within our homes. And uh, especially in a year like this one where we've been really uh, challenged to do things on a, a tighter budget, uh, it's really stretched us financially and creatively. You're making this much easier for all of us to provide uh, a home where students want to live and a home where those that live out can actually come and, and and still feel like they're, they're they have incentive they want to come back to the house so uh, I love all the tips that you shared today and especially for those of us who are on a, a tight tight budget so super super helpful thank you so very much for being with us today I appreciate it thank you thanks for having us absolutely so hey uh, as as Liz mentioned a few minutes ago we'd love for you to stay in touch with our friends from PDR uh, would love for you to stay in touch with us as well if you have any questions we can come alongside you in any way shape or form please don't hesitate to reach out our contact information is on the screen uh, if you have any questions whatsoever like i mentioned uh, please don't hesitate to reach out we're here to help and uh, are eager to do so so with all that being said i'll say thanks again for spending some time with us today we'll see you next time on house and home take care everybody <music>